Um, it's a tragedy for Britain, a tragedy for the British people, and in particular a tragedy for towns like Southall. The, the reason for this is in the future, the, it was hoped that these people would integrate with the British, but there's no hope of that at all. And it, this can only result in the future that ghettos will set up all over the country. Well, the simple fact of the matter is that we do not have sufficient houses, jobs and schools for our own people, let alone immigrants, be they black, brown, yellow or green. It simply boils down to a question of numbers. Well, of course, there are far too many immigrants in this country. When will the public wake up to the fact that you cannot put a quart into a pint bottle? About 12 or so years ago, there was very, very few people in Southall who were prejudiced. We did everything we possibly could to make these people welcome and help them when they first came here. But as there's been more and more come into the town, we've said to the authorities, please, no more. We're full up. Still they keep coming in by the hundred. Today, there's very few people in Southall who are not prejudiced. We hate And unless something's done about this quick, that prejudice is going to be sheer bloody hatred. <laughs> This is a film about race. That does not mean that this is a film about hatred, for the word discrimination does not mean that. Since the war, the people of this land have seen it change almost out of recognition. One of the biggest changes has been the massive inflow of hundreds of thousands of coloured immigrants. With them, they have brought new and widely incompatible cultures, social customs and habits. Sometimes, prompted by particular circumstances, large numbers of them have arrived at once. Strangely enough, no one, not even the government, either knows or is prepared to admit the precise number of immigrants who are here, or how fast their numbers are growing. There would seem to be about two and a half million immigrants currently in the country, and one prediction for the year 2000 suggests that one in 18 of us will be a coloured immigrant. Now, if the dispersal were as thorough as this, perhaps things wouldn't look so dismal, but even now it is not thorough at all. The people of a city of Nottingham know that. Their city map shows large villages of coloured people, solid areas where discrimination is mutual through total geographical segregation. Now protected by laws, under which it seems the immigrant may not win but can't lose, this alien population thrives and prospers, and all this to the bewilderment of those whose sons and daughters fought and died for a land they thought their own. In their words then, and from their hometowns, this is a little of the story of those whose voice is usually silent. Southall is part of the London borough of Ealing. The area has a large immigrant population. So large they bus children to other parts of the borough to preserve racial balance in the schools. So large that on a sunny day it's difficult to remember just where you are. If we are obliged to have these immigrants, why can't they be dispersed to other areas, especially to the areas that, of these MPs and the people that welcome them to this country? Well, as a small shopkeeper, the shop's inspector tells me the law, I'm breaking the law because I don't have a notice of, as to my early closing day. And when we asked him, what about these Indian shops, they're breaking the law all the time, he publicly stated, I know these people are breaking the law, but I'm afraid to take action against them in case I'm accused of racial prejudice. <laughs> My grandparents were married here in 1867 and six generations of my family have lived here but now I'm being driven out. The, uh, the local cemetery where all my people are buried, all my family, is, was used for gambling and drinking and a lot of the, even the tombstones have been damaged, the one next to my mother's was. 
and uh, there's gambling in the manor house grounds and uh, in the park, something which was, we never, was never allowed in Southall years ago. <laughs> Immigration, there are too many immigrants in Southall and the government have taken very little action in easing the situation or directing that immigrants should be dispersed from this area. And the housing problem, of course, is terrific. <laughs> My mother died a couple of years ago. I wouldn't have her buried in Southall because I hate the idea of an Indian temple being built over her grave in years to come. And that's not misguided emotion, for Southall already has a large and flourishing Asian religious community with its own temples. So what of the future for the whites who are left? Have we got Our one? only hope is to be able to get away from Southall, away from it all. Like everybody else, all our friends have gone. There's nothing left for English people in this town anymore. I would like to say this. My wife and I used to like to go out weekends to, down to the local, have a couple of drinks, meet friends in there. We can't go into the locals anymore. They're full up with noisy foreigners, and we don't like it. We don't we like it. We haven't got a place left where we, the English people, can go and enjoy ourselves in this town. After going through two world wars, we should at least have the dignity of being allowed to live with our own kind. Smethwick, just outside Birmingham. One of those places that look like the cornerstone of the Industrial Revolution. Here, in his home ground, meet local businessman John Wass. About ten years ago, I came into Smethwick to open this cutting tool business. And during this time, I have seen a great change take place in the population of this area. Because when we first came here, there were almost no coloured immigrants in the area. But it was a prosperous white working class area and that unskilled and semi-skilled jobs were available. West Indians started to move in to take these jobs and then we had the classic pattern that they have in the United States where one coloured family moves into a street, the whites start to move out, more coloured immigrants come in to take their place and over a period of past 10 years we've seen many of the streets around this area become predominantly black. But as these areas do become black, we get a situation where in more recent years Asians have also moved in with the West Indians and these Asians have opened shops which in turn have taken trade away from the white owned shops which has resulted in many white owned businesses closing down and the place has either been taken with Asian traders of various sorts or as today in Handsworth Soho Road you see many of these shops standing empty. The snag is with these Asian traders they don't make any genuine contribution to the community as a whole because the money that they earn from these businesses in many cases is transmitted back to India and Pakistan and the like this of course is bad from the country as a whole since it upsets the balance of payments and I understand that these remittances at the moment are running at the rate of about 40 million pounds a year of course these colored people coming into the area are creating black ghettos uh, and this is affecting the whole of the urban area including education and social services for example in this area today it is difficult for a white woman to get a bed in a maternity hospital because these beds are now taken up by colored women 
and I think this is particularly immoral because it is the white community at large that have paid for these beds over the years by, by taxation and particularly by their national health contributions and when their wives now want the services of the maternity hospital they find it, it, it is denied to them and yet at the same time being given to coloured women who may only have just arrived in this country. The official reason given for this is that white women live in far better conditions than the coloured women so that the white women can stay at home to have their children in sanitary conditions where the coloured women cannot apparently stay at home to have their children in insanitary conditions. The people of this country have got to make up its mind what sort of a country Britain is going to be in a hundred years time. If we allow the immigration to take place on the scale that it's taking place today, coupled with the birth rate of colours that's rapidly outstripping that of whites, then we're going to have a black state. The history of this country for the past thousand years has been one of repelling or preventing invasions of one sort and another. And yet here we have a situation where an unarmed invasion is taking place before our very eyes. And it's not outside the bounds of possibility that future generations will look back on the British of today like we look back on the ancient Egyptians.